Hey everybody, it's DJ with the 10 Hope Realty Group and welcome to episode six of Opening Up. Today, I have the chance to speak with local business owner and good friend, Mary Ansel. She does some amazing things to give back to the local community, so stay tuned. Mary, it's a pleasure for me to get to meet you and interview today because I know that you've been really excited about opening your, your studio back up and it's been a little difficult with uh, obviously the pandemic that's going on. So without further ado, I want you guys to, to meet Mary Ansel. Um, she has a studio called Open Heart Yoga in Red Bank, New Jersey. So here you go, you get to meet Mary. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. And yes, we're really excited to reopen. Um, our date for reopening is August 1st. This is our studio, although we have been using it just this past week for um, weather permitting because we have been doing a lot of outdoor yoga these days and so really enjoy it. Outdoor yoga is obviously great weather permitting, but where have you been doing those classes? Is it like some of the gyms that are working out in your parking lots? So we're not in the parking lots. Uh, thankfully, our community is so open-hearted and they invited us into their establishments on their lawn. So we have a coffee house in Red Bank called Coffee Corral that invited us. So we practice there every Friday afternoon at 3.30. And then the Grove is um, one of our partners and we, uh, Metrovation, is, so we practice there at the Grove Saturdays at 9 a.m. There's a nice outdoor space next to the Gap. And then um, Edgewater Beach Club has us every Sunday at 9.30. And yeah, so these are, and actually we do practice a lot in other people's yards and in my yard as well. So I've been Shrewsbury. Um, last year we did all these outdoor venues that I spoke about, but we really didn't do yard yoga. So that's a new thing that we did from this uh, homestay of ours. Um, so we, we really enjoy it because our yard yoga enables us to practice outdoors twice a day. Um, what, we usually have a morning class and a night class. And like I said, it's usually in my yard, but we've been practicing in other students' yards as well in Little Silver, Middletown. So yeah, there's lots of options. i well, definitely thinking outside the box. Before we get into um, how you got started in this, what makes me really excited about the interview is that you're – your studio does something really unique from a charitable perspective that most people may not even know about. Um, but with being in Red Bank, there's so many businesses and so many entrepreneurs there that are in that same type of a community to try to give back. So let's just table that for a second. We'll get into that because that's one of the most unique things I think about your business. But I'm anxious to hear how you got into yoga when you decided to do it. It's a great question. So I have scoliosis. So I was one of those kids in the scoliosis race when I was younger. Um, and when I had that all taken off, um, you know, it was, it's never 100% corrected, but it was corrected for the most part, but I still had a lot of back pain and neck pain every once in a while. So my back would go out maybe once a month or once every two months. And, um, and I decided to start practicing yoga purely for physical relief. And when I practiced regularly, I really did get that. Um, I don't remember the last time I had back pain or neck pain, thankfully. Um, but as well as all those physical benefits, I got so many other benefits as well that I wasn't even aware that I was going to get. So I got the gift of presence. I'm much more present and mindful. Um, I got the gift of focus, concentration. Um, um, you know, I, and that mindfulness and presence seeps into every aspect of my life. So. Um, as well as the physical benefits, the, the uh, mental and emotional benefits as well were equally, is it, if, if not more beneficial. That's great. I think so many people that begin with yoga end up staying with it for those same reasons. And you first started teaching before you had the studio in Red Bank over at Monmouth University Medical Center, is that right? Or was it Jersey Shore? Um, so I taught at Riverview a little bit, um, and then I taught at 180 Turning Lives Around at, at, in the safe house, but I really, my first studio that I taught in was Cold Snack Yoga. So I love Cold Snack, um, loved everybody in there, the students, the teachers, and it was a beautiful, warm environment. And, um, when one door closes, another one opens. So 
and also my kids are older, so they were all going into uh, college. So right around the time that Cult Snack Yoga closed. So um, that was my little opening to this adventure journey. And that's Cult Snack Yoga with Ann Yoakum. That's where you met Karen Turan, who's obviously one of our team members in our business and just somebody yes. we love. Exactly. She began as a teacher of mine. Um, I was certified by Ann. She's an amazing yoga instructor and trainer. And um, we're close friends now. So it was a wonderful benefit. Very cool. Um, so uh, one of my questions that I have for you before we get to the charitable uh, organization is with what's happening with people right now being still quarantined and still not going back to living their normal lives or going to work, people are really stuck in their houses. I, I can see yoga being a great outlet for people. Have you, have you seen people reaching out to you to, to join that maybe hadn't done this in the past? Yes. Um, they reach out, they say they're, you know, they're stressed or, um, or just on balance and yoga, you know, when you think of yoga, you think of pretzel moves and balancing on one foot, but it's really about balancing your life. So uh, this homestay, this quarantine COVID really got us a little bit out of whack mm -hmm. and we're feeling maybe on balance. So coming to your mat, preferably every day or whenever you can, it really just helps you balance all these qualities holding on, letting go, too much control, a little bit surrender. This is teaching us how to surrender. We really have no control over this and we have to surrender to it. And, you know, so our practice teaches us how to do that gracefully. I think that sounds like something that every real estate agent needs to have happen in their life right now, because if yes. people know the market is out of control and our work-life balance is terrible at the moment because we know that this, you know, can't stay at this pace forever, but the amount of work that we're doing, the hours that everyone's putting in nowadays is definitely causing a huge imbalance. I agree, I so, agree. You might have a couple of new students coming to join you soon. Please, welcome. Uh, so <laughs> getting back to the question I was teasing in the beginning around the charitable organization. So you do something when people join, whether it's for a single session, a weekly, yearly, and, and you give back to another charitable organization because you are a 501c3, right? Yes, we're a 501c3. Can you explain so, to me how the process works and what motivated you to do this? Certainly, my pleasure. So um, for years and years and years, uh, I've been going to studios and um, just saw the lack of diversity. And I just felt like um, a lot of people practicing were like just replicas of me and maybe could afford this, um, this practice of yoga because it's like $20 a class. It's not cheap. Um, so there are packages, uh, of course, um, but I just wanted this practice. I wanted everyone to be able to enrich themselves. They could do it on their own through this practice that's thousands of years old. And all you need to do is have a, a nice studio and a guide to teach you these practices, and then you could do it. So I wanted to make it accessible to everyone, um, but I can't, I can't do that. But I could start in baby steps and... Um, I was thinking Red Bank is the home of so many beautiful nonprofits. It's like a hub. There's, they're all around our studio. And um, from lunch break, that's a few blocks away, to 180 Turn Home Lives Around, to Count Basie. They're all within this vicinity. Right. And we partnered up with 10 of them um, that, that we've been supporting over these years. We love each and every one of these organizations. And when I called and told them my intention, everyone, not one person said no. So all of the CEOs or the, um, the presidents of these organizations uh, decided to be our partners. So we have 10 partners so far. We've only been around for a little over a year. We celebrated our year, um, May 5th. Um, and well, every class- A little class bit difficult that, for a one year anniversary, huh? Exactly, exactly. But we've been supported so well by our community um, so every class that our students purchase, they're also donating simultaneously. So if you come in and buy a month of yoga, a week of yoga, or even a drop-in, you could choose from our 10 charities, which charity gets your drop-in or your week. And they take those vouchers and they distribute it to volunteers or recipients of their services. We have lunch break come in here most often. Um, because of COVID, when we were doing our virtual classes, I've seen a lot more women from the safe house at, women, at 180 Turning Lives Around practice with us. 
So that was a gift to us. We would have never really practiced virtual yoga unless we were forced to, and we were forced to, and we see so many other people taking, taking um, you know, practicing with us because of that. There's no travel, it's safe. Um, so we're going to keep that virtual yoga with us when our studio reopens as well. But um, I'd, I'd love to share with you the 10, the 10 charities if you'd like. Yeah, hit us with them, please. I would love for them to get some extra press because like you said, Red Bank is the hub of so many great nonprofits. So many. Um, so we have 180 Turning Lives Around, which is a safe house for victims of domestic abuse. I taught there for years prior to opening this studio. Um, I went there weekly, um, met different people, different families. They practiced with their, with their kids or without. And it was a beautiful experience and that really helped um, catapult me into the studio. Um, there's the Beauty Foundation, which helps women with cancer care. So if they're going through their, their recovery, they really should focus on that. And the Beauty Foundation comes in and helps buy Christmas gifts and do all the other stuff for you, grocery shopping. Um, so they're a beautiful partner. We have Bloom Again, which provides financial serve, um, help to people that are going through any type of health crisis and, and lost their job as a result. So they're working women in this area that had to stop working because of their health crisis. Um, right next door, our, um, our, our uh, parking lots meet each other is JBJ Soul Kitchen. Um, they provide meals for people that can't afford it. When you go and eat there, you're helping somebody else eat for free, which is kind of cool, it's similar. That's a similar uh, mission. Yeah. And we have um, Parker Family Health Center, which is like two blocks this way, provides health care for people that don't have health insurance in our areas. Um, and they, the doctors and nurses are there for anybody that can afford health care or not. And of course, lunch break. I spoke to you about lunch break. They are really, during this whole um, pandemic, so many providing so many uh, meals to people in our area. And then um, Tugger House Foundation, it's a beautiful um, organization providing uh, help for people that are opiate ad addict addicts or um, recovering from addiction. And the last two are Steffi's Place. If, you're, if you are grieving or um, have loss in your life, you go right down the street to Steffi's Place. They have wonderful meetings for you to talk to other people that are experiencing the same so um, it was founded by Sheila Martello, who lost her husband in 9-11. And she, got, she had so much of a support system that she started this for other people that lose anyone. And, um, and the VNA, visiting nurses. So of course our health care providers are amazing and we help enrich their lives as well. I love watching the smile on your face as you talk about all those businesses too, because you know what they do to give back to the local community. It's really great. Thank you. The, uh, the coolest thing about the way you've set this up is so many people, and not that financial assistance isn't necessary also, but so many of the donations that people make from a 501c3 are just monetary, where the way you've set this up, just kind of like JBJ, is you're purposeful with what that person's getting in return, and that they actually are going to get an experience in yoga, which will open doors for them and, and hopefully help them in other ways than just financial assistance. So I think that's amazing. And it's really hard as a business owner to find ways to give back aside from just straight financial. So I give you a lot of kudos for being creative to figure that out. Thank you. It seemed like a common sense thing, um, but I understand it is kind of unique and I'm happy to have this, uh, this ability to provide it for our community, but I really feel this is a community studio. So um, yeah, well, the doors are open, always open, welcome. And yes, like you said, you get, you get that beautiful gift of yoga, that self-care that you're giving yourself and you're also allowing somebody else to have it. And, and also, uh, we have give so back, which is the tax deduction, right? Yes, 50% of whatever you spend here is tax deductible because you do get your yoga, but you're also giving your yoga. And we have a lot of um, businesses right around this area that are um, corporate sponsors that because they're a corporate sponsor, they get 100 free passes to give to their employees or their patrons and they, they really do love it. Some of them walk over here during lunch hour. Um, lots of great businesses in the area that I love an, an employer that gives yoga to his employees. Absolutely. So let's flip it a little bit here and let's ask some personal questions. So how have you and your family been handling COVID aside from the business? 
Well, um, so I was just in an empty nest phase, but now all of my kids are home, which is wonderful. <laughs> so <laughs> they, we have uh, three children that are 20, 20, almost 22 and 24. And um, so it's a party. It's fun at home, but uh, it's definitely challenging for them. Like for me, it's wonderful to have them home, but I'm looking at it through their eyes and I kind of feel bad for them. Um, you know, not being able to celebrate their friends' 21st birthdays together, which last year they would have done in a big way. And, um, and going back to school, um, not knowing if it's going to be virtual or, or in class. My son plays football for Wagner, and every week the football camp is postponed and postponed. So we don't even know if they'll have a season. But, um, but yeah, like everyone else, we did some fun things, lots of puzzles, lots of games, lots of, uh, lots of family time lots of new meals and new recipes and uh you know all everything that everyone else is doing i i love hearing about how enriched everybody is coming together but um but again for me it's it's been a nice thing i maybe because yoga teaches you how to transition and it's all about change i i do love change a lot of people don't like change they like routine um so it's like going with the flow. And again, we don't have control over this. So we're trying to make the best of it and um, trying to help others as much as we can because there's, like I said, lunch break is super, super, super busy. If anyone wants to volunteer to help deliver meals, again, that makes them feel good. It makes you feel good. And there's a lot of people suffering. So, you know, like in our, in our home, like I said, it's nice to have the kids back, but it's... Um, you know, it's heartbreaking what we feel about everybody else. Not yeah, everybody I else. think it's going to be a year with a lot more photos that people are going to have with their families than they would have had otherwise, because you have so yes. much time together that you wouldn't have had. So I think that's a great thing, but you're right. For for people who are in those big change lifetime um, brackets where they're either leaving high school going to college or leaving college and going to start out on their own, there's a lot of those milestones that aren't necessarily happening the same way that they did for the rest of us. So it's, it's definitely strange. Um, but hopefully everybody transitions with it, you know, seamlessly and everybody does it safely. That's the most important thing. Exactly. So I always ask this question of everybody who comes on the show and it is for restaurants. So when we first started these episodes, there really was no in-person dining because everything was just happening off, off site and takeout. Now we know that we're, we're doing a lot of outdoor dining and Red Bank does an amazing thing on Thursday, Friday and Saturday and Sundays where they shut down Broad Street, but it doesn't have to be Red Bank. So the question to you is, what restaurant has been your favorite place or your first place that you went back to for outdoor dining? Let's see. Um, our fa well, I, I feel bad about uh, giving Everybody them feels bad when I ask this question because they want to say the 25 restaurants that they I'm love. I'm so not a superlative person because I don't, I don't, I love so many restaurants. It's not the best. They're all different versions of wonderful, but I love, um, I love Angelica's and Seabright. I love dining outside in their little alleyway with the, the lights overhead. It feels like you're in Italy. Um, it's beautiful, and um, you can throw a couple more out there. That's fine. Yeah. Red Bank Bistro is is always great. It's been around for so long, yet I always crave it. And I don't like to go back to the same place over and over usually, but but Bistro is a staple. I we always go back there. Um, love Bistro. Um, a lot of restaurants. Yeah. We go to a lot of them. I I don't eat meat. But my husband loves Butcher Block, and I do go there, and they always have a wonderful fresh fish for me, and it is spectacularly beautiful there. So even outdoors, beautiful fountains, they, they decorate it so nicely. So That's a good one. I'm glad you mentioned that, because I'm going to blow them up here on the video. Um, I've never been, and I've heard only amazing things about it, but the reason why I haven't been is my wife and I are both vegan. And being vegan at the Butcher Block, a little bit of a challenge. I know they have pizzas and they could probably do some other things, but I would love to see something like real vegan food added to the menu yeah. so that we can go and support them. Yes. Still pescetarian here. I get it. So they do <laughs> give me a, a piece of fish and, um, and I'm sure they will, they will mod modify anything. There's, you know, they're phenomenal people there. Yes, and great chef. Yeah. Um, all right. So the last question is always, well, before we were allowed to go see our family members was who's the first person that you're going to give a hug or a kiss to that you haven't been able to see. But I guess my question was who was the first person that you ran to that you weren't able to actually have physical contact with? 
Uh, so my parents are in their 80s. So definitely them. We were doing a lot of social distancing. But I remember that first hug. But I'm still afraid to do it, to tell you the truth. So we don't do it that often. And my brother just had a baby. So um, James, yeah, he's four months old. And he is being secluded. We were able to hug and kiss him in the hospital room. But then right after that, this all happened. And, um, and we really, you know, we could see him from a distance. So I can't, can't wait to snuggle him up. Yeah, it sounds like it'll be a blast when you finally get to do so. Yeah. So just wrapping up, um, the studio is opening this week, correct? This coming week? August 1st, yep. We are open every day uh, virtually, uh, virtually and outdoors. So check us out on my for our website. And, um, and yes, August 1st, you'll see in-studio classes prepared on my awesome. body. What's the website that we should send people to? Openheartyogamj.org. That's perfect. We'll make sure it, uh, it gets across the screen here on the bottom. So, and we'll link it in the video as well so people can head over there. Thank you. Anything else you want to add? No, I appreciate this time. Thank you very much. Absolutely. You're very lucky to have Karen on your team. Karen's good people. Um, we've, great. <laughs> Karen has a very funny story about how many times we met with her during the interview process that she thought she was being grilled. But we, we take a lot of care in making sure that the people who join into our, our team keep with the culture and, and really are just good people that we would love to hang around with in addition to doing business with. And Karen's one of the first people into the team and uh, she's definitely just good people across the board and fantastic in our business. She helps a ton of clients out. And I love I her family too, her boys and her husband, everybody's just fun to be around. I agree. Tell her I said hello. Will do. Mary, <laughs> thanks so much for spending time with us. I appreciate it. We'll send people over to the website to take a look and follow you on Instagram and uh, Facebook as well. And I wish you the best of luck once you open up on August 1st. Um, I'm hoping I'm going to be in there in the first week because I can use some balance. Awesome. Thank you. Nice. Be well. Bye-bye. Thanks so much for watching. Please make sure you hit the like button down below. Give us a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe for any future videos that we drop. And if you know of any local New Jersey businesses that would like to be featured on our opening up series, just drop us a line below.